31, the first thing you do is 9 minus 5, which is 4. And then you do 6 minus 8, which is negative 2. And then a positive minus a negative equals a positive, so 4 minus a positive 2 equals 2. And you would get C. Yo, 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 this is Tyrone of period four, and we're showing you number 32. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the is, which expression has the smallest value? I'll, the absolute value of negative 19 is 19, because it's 19 spaces away from zero. Oh, yeah. And uh, negative four. the absolute value of negative four is 34. <laughs> the absolute value C, 11, is 11. Oh, challenger. <laughs> the absolute value of 47 is 47. All right, class, what is the right answer? While while you're thinking of the right answer, I would just like to say, <laughs> watch our show on TBS, Tyrone and Treven. Come on. It's C. Okay. The, 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 the correct line. answer is uh, C. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I don't know how to do this. Uh, oh, my, oh, my. No. Oh, uh, okay, so... The uh, absolute value of negative 4 is 4, so absolute value of negative 18 is 18, is and uh, I have a guest over here, his name's Draven. Uh, Yo, what's up, this is your boy Draven from grade 4, and Tyrone, and, and, Tyrone. <laughs> and, and a negative uh, 7 is 7, and Watch our value show of 16 Stop. is 16, so Please. 4 is closest to 5 on the number line, so it's A. For number 4, it says the sum of a number n and 14 is 72, which equation shows this relationship? Sum means uh, add, uh, and it says uh, a number n and 14, so that's n and 14, and then is, which means equals 72. So. Let's switch that around. Then we get A. First, you have to substitute the variables. So it's 4 times 3. And then you substitute x is 2 times 4. <laughs> and then you multiply 4 times 3 is 12. And then you multiply 2 times x, 4. And then it's 8. And then you substitute that, and then it's 4. Which is eight. Question is if four, if m equals three and n equals five, what is the value of four m plus m n? So first you substitute in three for m, so you do four three plus three five, and so you do four times three, which is twelve plus three times five, which is fifteen which equals 27B. Okay, so we have looked at these problems before, but I want to go back and remind you the, about the properties. You're going to have several questions related to properties, and one of the things we came up in our class um, previously was, um, it's called CADI, C-A-D-I. And like a caddy is somebody, it's not really spelled that way, but a caddy is somebody that helps a golfer out and carries their clubs and helps them on the um, golf course. So caddy for us stands for commutative, associative, distributive, and identity. And those are the main properties that we're going to be dealing with. So let's take a look at number 37. Which operation will change the value of any non-zero number? So again, I'd like to just pick an example. I'm going to pick 11 because that's my favorite number and just go through the answers. If I add 0, that's not going to change the value. Okay? So it can't be that. If I multiply by 0, oh, that's going to change it to 0. So it has to be B. And you can just go back through and look. Multiplying by 1, again, would not change the value. And then dividing by 1 would not change the value we'd leave it all as 11. So the only one that's reasonable is B. For 38, it's which property is used in the equation below. So I like to look at what's going on on the left and compare it with what's happening on the right. 
and it's dealing with a property so I'm gonna refresh my memory with caddy and you look and you see these that are listed reflexive we haven't gone over that but we can talk about that later but let's take a look 12 is given a group hug to x plus 4 and then it gives a hug to each individually so that's going to be our distributive property is distributing the love the most common thing that students forget is to multiply the second term so make sure that you multiply that just like if it was 3 x plus 2 I'm going to multiply each so that's going to be 3 x plus 3 times 2 which is 6 and that's distributing the love now for 39 which expression is equivalent now this one we talked about was a little bit higher um, level but it's looking at what common factor is in both of these terms and I can see that the 3 is so if I was using the distributive property backwards I would take out a 3 that leaves me with an x minus y so that's going to be b and again you could always work forward and use the distributive property that's going to be 3x minus 3y so you can see that those are the same for 40 it's which of the following illustrates the inverse property and I guess I should add another i to the caddy but inverse means that we undo what was done and so if I look at this one 5 and then I divide by 5 that's going to get me back to 1 so it's actually going to be a this one is our identity property okay, keeps it 5 the same this is changing it to 0 and that's just 5 times 5 25. not really a property for 41 which equation shows the distributive property again distributing the love so which one is so if I'm looking at this, okay, so I have one term multiplying the parentheses, and then I have this individual term. So let's see if that works. 4 times 3 is 12, and then 4 times 6 is 24. Yep, so that's my distributive right here. This one, again, I'm not multiplying anything. You're not multiplying. These are just addition. So the only one that's distributing is 41. And then for 42, it's which expression is the result of applying the distributive property? So again, 8 is given a great big hug to 100 plus 5. But you want to demonstrate the expression. So you're going to give a hug to each one individually. So that's going to be 8 times 100 plus 8 times 5. So this would be 800 plus 40. And that's the distributive property. And then for this next one, this one's a little bit tricky. They made it harder than it needs to be. But it's which property is being illustrated. So I'm going to look and I see identity. I see commutative, distributive, and multiplicative identity. So first thing I can look at, there's really no addition in there. So I know that I'm not going to be adding anything. The commutative property is when we switch orders. Okay? And I, so I see that I'm really right here, I'm multiplying. This is a 1. So I'm taking 1 half times 1. Oh, 3, 6, if I was to simplify that, that's going to be 1 half. So let's just take a look at what was being done. 1 half is being multiplied by 1, and it's staying 1 half. So that's your multiplicative identity. It's keeping its own identity. They just made it harder than it needed to because they changed this 1 to 3 over 3, and then they changed this 3 or 1 half to 3 6. But if I divide the top and the bottom by 3 over 3, that's going to give me back to the 1 half. All right, and then 44, again, which property is illustrating, illustrated by this? So you're like, hmm, it's hugging the group. Oh, and then now it's hugging them individually. So which property is that? That's the distributive property. It's distributing the love. So it's going to be 2 times 2x 
plus 2 times 4, and again, the main thing is people forget to multiply the last term, 2 times 4, so it's 4x plus 8. Distributing. And then this last one, which is an example of an inequality, and remember our inequality signs is I have less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. So the only one with one of these symbols is B.